Hello, and welcome to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. This will be the eighth lecture in our wood design series. The lovely music for today's lesson comes from the artist Maidan from the album Havor. A link to the album is included in the video description. Today's video is going to be an introduction to the form and structure of the NDS. It will be a brief exploration of the three volumes of the NDS, as well as a discussion of some of the design methodology as laid out in the NDS specification. First, I should briefly mention where you can obtain a copy of the NDS. As a reminder, when I say the NDS, I'm referring to the American Woods Council's National Design Specification for Wood Construction. This course will make reference to the 2018 NDS. All excerpts, values, and references uh, will come from this 2018 edition. At the, as the time of working on this series, the 2018 is the most recent edition. However, inevitably another version will come out uh, in a few years' time, but for now the 2018 edition will do. The one exception to this is the SDPWS, for which the 2015 edition is the most recent. Thankfully, the American Wood Council does post a free read-only edition of the NDS and its supplements. Uh, links to these are included in the video description. If you would prefer a paper version, there is a link to a full NDS package in the description of as well. Full disclosure, that is an Amazon affiliate link, so if you purchased from there, it would help the channel out a bit, although it doesn't cost you any extra. There are three main volumes that are often referred to as the NDS package or the wood design package. These are the NDS itself, the NDS supplement, and the SDPWS. We will first consider the structure of the NDS itself. First, let's consider the structure of the NDS itself. In my mind, I group the NDS into six primary sections. Now, these aren't any official grouping, these, they are just how I conceptualize the NDS, um, my personal way of keeping track of everything. Um, my first section, or my first grouping, covers chapters 1 and 2. I would call these chapters the general or introductory chapters. These essentially lay out how uh, the rest of the specification works. They include things like general code descriptions, a list of variables, and information on where to find various uh, items. Uh, the second section is found entirely in Chapter 3. I would call this the Mechanics section. This section contains many formulas and provisions that relate to how stresses and deformations are to be calculated. The provisions here apply regardless of the type of wood product you're using. They're largely mechanics-based equations that apply universally. What I consider to be the third main section of the NDS is a rather long one spanning from chapters 4 through 10. These chapters have provisions that relate to specific kinds of wood products. For example, chapter 4 covers specifically sawn lumber, while chapter 10 covers cross-laminated timber. These chapters contain provisions that are tailored specifically to those particular types of lumber products. The fourth section in my grouping uh, is chapters 11 through 14. I would call this the connection section. This section deals with various provisions for designing the connections of wood members, both the strength of wood members themselves and whatever mechanical connectors are used to join one lumber product to another. The fifth section is what I would call the miscellaneous section. This covers chapters 15, 16, and the appendices. Uh, these are miscellaneous provisions that apply for specialized analyses such as fire design. The sixth and final section is a very important one, and that is the commentary. One side note, the commentary is included in the paid versions of the NDS, but it is not included in the free online edition. Uh, the commentary is a mirror of the rest of the NDS. Every chapter in the NDS has a corresponding section in the commentary. Uh, the commentary serves a number of important functions. First, it serves as a more detailed discussion of the various topics involved than what is provided in the primary sections. Second, it contains information for cases that are exceptions or otherwise outside 
of the typical cases considered in the primary code. Um, finally, it contains in-depth discussions of the assumptions, background, and foundational research that has gone into developing uh, the various provisions in the NDS. If you're seeking to learn about the research and development of some provision uh, of an NDS chapter, the commentary is where you really want to look. Now that we've seen the general layout of the NDS, I want to show in general how the NDS overall design uh, approach works. The NDS works primarily through strength values. These strength values are mechanical properties that are used in equations of mechanics. The basic process is to start with a uh, what is referred to as a reference design value and then multiply it by a series of adjustment factors. The adjustment factors address numerous considerations, from loading types, to member geometry, to environmental factors. We will cover all of these in great depth in later videos, but for now, I just wanted to introduce the general methods of the NDS uh, to you for your familiarity. For example, consider Table 4.3.1 uh, from the NDS as shown here. So, uh, notice, for example, that we have an, uh, a, uh, in this row, FB prime equals FB times CD times CM times CT times CL times CF times CFU times CI times CT. Um, and then the LRFD factors as well, if we're getting into those. But, um, again, uh, the way this works is you have your reference design value. So, in this case, FB is your base reference allowable bending stress. And then you have a series of factors that apply a variety of modifications, either increasing, well, usually decreasing, but in some cases, actually increasing the allowable stress. So for example, a uh, load duration factor that, that involves uh, how long a particular load is applied, a wet service factor, which involves moisture content, temperature, and then beam stability, uh, size factors, and a lot of these other factors that again, we will get into. And not all of them are applicable to each different type of stress. So for example, if you look at the beam stability factor, it's only applicable to um, bending stress, this FB here, but it's not applicable to say like uh, your uh, tension stress here or your shear or compression parallel or perpendicular to crane. So again, the basic way that the NDS works is that you start with a reference uh, allowable stress for a particular type of loading whether that be bending or tension, etc., or a certain modulus elasticity that you use in your um, deflection calculations, and then you modify it with a series of modification factors that take into account various uh, adjustments to take into account your exact specific um, scenario that you're dealing with. The NDS supplement is your primary source for your reference design values. Note again, these are the base values for things such as tensile strength, bending strength, etc. before any adjustment factors are applied. Uh, typically what you'll find in here is just your basic unadjusted uh, reference values. And here's an example of finding uh, some of the reference design values in the NDS supplement. This is Table 4A, reference design values for gr visually graded uh, dimension lumber 2-4 to four inches thick. And uh, you can see here that for each given type, or actually each given um, commercial species group uh, that you'll find in Table 4A, uh, they'll, under each of these groups there are a series of grades, as we've discussed a bit in the past, and then for each given grade there is a certain um, provided reference uh, stress value for uh, each type of loading that you would experience. So for example, if you're looking at number one Alaskan cedar, uh, it would have a FB, a reference uh, allowable bending stress of 975 PSI. And again, this is just the base reference allowable bending stress before you apply any modification factors. And again, for each different type of uh, species group, for each different type of species, uh, you'll have a uh, certain reference allowable bending stresses, tension stresses, shear stresses, etc., uh, specific gravities, etc., uh, that will, you will then use, uh, well again, you'll take these, multiply them by a series of modification factors, and then that modified stress is what you'll use when you're calculating your uh, 
uh, stress ratios and things like that uh, as a part of your design. The final component of the AWC's wood design package is the special design provisions for wind and seismic, or the SDPWS, a uh, wonderfully short named uh, volume if there ever was one. The SDPWS, as the name implies, has special provisions for wind and seismic loading. In other words, it's primarily a resource for various lateral load provisions. We will refer to it in depth later in this video series when we learn how to design things like plywood shear walls, floor diaphragms, etc. But for now, just know that this volume is primarily for the lateral force resisting system uh, design. And with that, that concludes my general overview of the NDS volumes and provisions. Again, this is just meant to be a short guide and introduction to the NDS, a map of how to navigate around it. In the next video in this series, we will be looking at member sizes and section properties. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. If you did, please like and subscribe to make the YouTube robots happy. If you would like to help make content like this possible, see the link to our Patreon page in the video description. Regardless, I hope to see you all in the next lecture, and I look forward to continuing our exploration of wood design. I look forward to seeing you all then, and as always, thank you.